Hi, and welcome to my talk on efficient creation of data sets for data-driven power system applications. This is joint work with Dan Molson from Georgia Tech and Spiros Hatsivasiliadis from DTU. The outline of my talk is as follows. First, I will motivate the topic and define the scope of our work. And then I'll explain the infeasibility certificate that we're going to use and an efficient algorithm to create data sets. Then I'll present some of the balanced data sets that we created for PGLib OPF test cases. And finally, I'll present some conclusions. Machine learning, including neural networks, have been applied to a range of power system applications since decades. And the recent advances in deep learning, so for example, the success of deep learning in the game of Go, have sparked a renewed interest for power system applications. And one promising application is to use machine learning for power system security assessment. So that is to screen a large number of operating points for static security criteria, such as N minus one security criterion and operational constraints and dynamic stability criteria, such as small signal or transient stability. And one of the many um, application examples in literature is to use convolutional neural networks to predict N minus one security or N minus one security plus the small signal stability. And what these two works here show is that um, the convolutional neural networks are about two orders of magnitude faster than conventional approaches. The performance of machine learning um, tools in power system, however, highly depends on the quality of the data set used. So if we rely on historical data, we only have limited information of abnormal situations or not secure operating regions. And also the problem dimensionality is very high. So the number of control variables that usually characterize an operating point can be quite large. And in order to successfully apply machine learning tools for system security assessment, we require balanced data sets of secure and not secure operating points that have a detailed security boundary description. And obtaining these is computationally hard due to the large input dimensionality. So for example, if you would do a brute force sampling for the 162 bus system, for a one megawatt discretization interval for the generator active power set points and one loading level, this would require us to evaluate 10 to the power of 29 operating points. And there are two lines of work in literature that address data set creation. So the first one uses important sampling. So that is having multiple rounds of sampling where the sampling is biased towards regions of interest. As we will show later in our simulation results, um, this can be challenging as the input space in power systems is largely unbalanced. So that means that large parts of the input space actually are not secure and it can be quite challenging to identify the secure operating regions. The second line of work uses composite approaches or vine copulas to enrich historical data. And this again is highly dependent on the quality of the historical data available. So the approach that we propose in this work is modular and parallelizable. So it uses infeasibility certificate to classify large parts of the input space a priori as not secure. It obtains a detailed boundary description, creates balanced data sets, and can also utilize historical data. So the first step of our data set creation methods are infeasibility certificates. So now um, a bit more formalized. The goal here is for a defined input space, capital D of dimension lowercase d, to obtain a balanced data set that characterizes the boundary of the secure space. So the secure space is shown here in green and encompasses both static and dynamic security criteria. So, and the overall input space um, can be characterized for an operating point, for example, that is defined by the active power set point and the voltage set point, just by taking the minimum and the maximum uh, limits from the operational constraints. And now the prerequisite for the assessment of dynamic stability criteria is the feasibility to the static security criteria, such as the N minus one criterion or um, operational constraints. And these static security criteria are described in the AC optimal power flow problem. So that means that the AC feasible space here shown in black includes the secure space shown in green. And then in the next step, um, we look at the feasible space of convex relaxations of the AC OPF and those include um, the AC feasible space. 
and the convex relaxation can provide an infeasibility certificate. So if we look at an infeasible operating point x hat, then we can compute, compute the closest dispatch x star that is actually feasible to the convex relaxation of the ACOPF. And we do that by minimizing the Euclidean distance subject to x star being feasible to the convex relaxation of the ACOPF. And now uh, Dan Maltzan has previously proposed hyperspheres with the radius r star as infeasibility certificates. So that means that any sample that lies within the hypersphere is guaranteed to be infeasible to the convex relaxation and a result also being uh, not part of the secure space. And here um, we propose to use instead separating hyperplanes as infeasibility certificates. So that means that all operating points that are on the left-hand side of this hyperplane are guaranteed to be not secure. And what we can observe is that if we use multiple hyperplanes, these hyperplanes form a convex polyhedron. So that means that the unclassified input space is characterized by a convex polyhedron. And the uh, benefit of the hyperplanes compared to the hyperspheres is, first of all, that larger parts of the input space are classified as infeasible, and we have efficient methods available to sample from within a convex polyhedron. And based on these insights, we propose an algorithm to minimize the unclassified input space. That is uh, the same as minimizing the volume of the convex polyhedron for an upper uh, number of n1 iterations. So we start by initializing the unclassified input space as a0x smaller than b0. And in the matrix A, we just have the identity. And in the uh, vector b, we collect the minimum and maximum bounds on um, the control variables. And then as uh, long as we haven't reached the upper number of iterations, we draw a random sample from inside the convex polyhedron and compute the closest uh, feasible operating point to the sample. And if the distance um, is larger than zero, so that means that the point that we drew from the convex polyhedron is not feasible to the convex relaxation, we can reduce the unclassified region by adding a hyperplane. And then we just return to step two and repeat it until we have reached the upper amount of iterations. And now we um, show a comparison of the infeasibility certificates. So throughout um, this presentation, the reference normalized volume is always one. So we uh, normalize x min and x max to zero and one respectively. And then we use velocity to approximate the volume of a convex polyhedron and rejection sampling to approximate the volume of hyperspheres. And here you can see the number of iterations with respect to the unclassified volume for two uh, test cases, a 39 and a 162 bus test case, and we compare hyperspheres and hyperplanes. And here you can clearly see that the hyperplanes um, are able to quickly um, reduce the unclassified volume down to 10 to the minus 5. And this volume reduction from 1 to 10 minus 5 implies that in expectation, we have to take at least 10 to the power of five samples to identify one potential feasible sample. And that shows that if we just do brute force sampling here, it will be uh, very difficult to obtain secure samples. And if our goal is to have a balanced data set, um, uh, then this um, is a very challenging task. And now I will present the efficient algorithm to create data sets. So again, the goal is to computationally efficiently create a balanced data set of secure and insecure operating point that have a detailed boundary description. And the first thing we do is we do a bound tightening for the ACOPF problem that allows us to um, tighten the convex relaxations that we're going to use. And then in the next step, we directly tighten the input bounds by maximizing and minimizing the entries of X subject to the constraints of the convex relaxation of the ACOPF. And this allows us essentially to reduce the initial um, black box here to the gray box. So, and the volume reduction we quantify with uh, V um, superscript BT. And then we run the algorithm to minimize the unclassified input space. And we obtain this uh, shown here in yellow convex polyhedron that has an unclassified volume of V uh, superscript HP. And then we draw and classify a number n2 samples from within this convex polyhedron. 
and in the next step we obtain a detailed boundary identification. So that means for each of the infeasible samples x we identify the closest secure operating point. And here in this work we only look at static security so that means we can simply solve an OPF minimizing the distance to the feasible solution. We also have another work where we looked at dynamic security so there we use directed walks and sensitivity measures um, to get to the dynamic security boundary. And then in the next step, we fit a multivariate Gaussian distribution to the obtained secure samples and if available to um, historical data of secure samples. And in order to get a good characterization of inside of the secure space, we um, bias the sampling um, with multiplying the covariance matrix with a factor that is smaller than one. And then in the next step, we draw and classify N3 samples from this fit distribution. And overall, um, this algorithm is parallelizable and modular, and we can also include important sampling or vine copulas as well in the different stages of the algorithm. Now I would like to present some simulation results where we created balanced data sets for PGLib OPF test cases. So we use the QC relaxation as it represents a good trade-off between computational tractability and tightness of the relaxation and two existing bound tightening techniques, an analytical and an optimization-based bound tightening. We use two security criteria. One are the operational constraints and the second one is N minus one security and also uncertainty in generation and loading. And for the first security criteria, we evaluate 13 PGLib OPF test cases up to 500 buses and an input dimensionality of 125. And for the second security criteria, we um, use the 39 and the 162 bus test case where we consider five line outages, three uncertain loads and three uncertain renewable generators. And the sampling sizes um, kind of progressively increase throughout um, the algorithm. So for the first stage, we use 1,000, for the second stage, 10,000, and then for the third stage, 100,000 samples. Here we can see the unclassified input volumes for the PGLib OPF cases. So here are the, operation, uh, the cases for the operational constraints and here for N-1 security and uncertainty. We can see that the number of control variables can be up to 125. And uh, here is the uh, remaining volume after the bound tightening. So we can see that this bound tightening can allow us to a priori reduce the unclassified space from the normalized um, value of one. Um, this reduction is however test case dependent. So for some test cases it does not lead to reduction for others, we can see substantial reductions. And then now looking at the uh, volume of the convex polyhedron, um, we can see that this step allows us to significantly reduce the unclassified input space for all 15 test cases. And here is also shown the number of hyperplanes that we include. And it can be seen that for um, this test case here in particular, for each of the samples that we draw from the convex polyhedron, it's infeasible to the convex relaxation. So we add a thousand hyperplanes. So here increasing the number um, could even further reduce um, the unclassified volume. And now taking a look at the next step um, in the data set creation, so the boundary identification, um, we can see that by directly uh, sampling from the convex polyhedron, we're able to identify um, secure samples. And also by uh, sampling from the fitted uh, multivariate Gaussian distribution, we identify additional secure samples. So the overall um, secure samples um, is around 50%. So that means we obtain balanced data sets for a range of test cases. And now to conclude, we proposed infeasibility certificates um, based on hyperplanes and using convex relaxations of the ACOPF. And we introduced an algorithm that allows to a priori minimize the unclassified input space. And this reduced um, the input space volumes from 10 to the minus two up to 10 to the minus 40 compared to the reference volume of one. And we um, propose a modular and parallelizable algorithm that allows us to create balanced data sets with a detailed security boundary description. And we're now uh, working on um, an open source implementation and also plan to soon release um, the data sets. Thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to answer any questions.